As you probably know, I did a 3D design competition with my mini factory. And in doing this, I started to look more and more into 3D printed mounts and kind of the rabbit hole of cool designs and concepts and mounts and ideas for mounts that exist out there as uh, 3D designs that you can print at home on a 3D printer. So I decided to delve into this a little bit. I picked up a very cheap entry level 3D printer. This is the M3D. Do not think I am recommending it. It is simply a avenue for me to get into 3D printing and find out if it's something that is actually worth investing in. With this printer, I'm going to be starting a new little series here called 3D Printed Thursdays. And what we're going to do is at every Thursday, we're going to explore one new 3D printed GoPro mount, talk about some of the, the, the benefits of it, what I think about it, some cool designs that it allows you to do, some cool mounts that you're able to do because of it, and some very, maybe we'll look at some very unique and very specific mounting situation mounts that people have made to fill their own use cases, or just some really useful general case mounts um, that exist out there. And all of them are gonna be 3D printed here and talked about, and if you have a 3D printer and wanna print your own, all of the files to go find them will be down below. If you're looking around online and find cool 3D mounts, or 3D printable mounts on any of the 3D printed 3D print libraries out there, Thingiverse, My Mini Factory, there's tons of them. Uh, tweet them at me, send them to me, email them to me. All of that content information is down in the video description. So just send them to me and it will probably get featured on an upcoming uh, episode of 3D Printed Thursday. So to get started, I figured we would talk about the first mount. And that, in fact, is the 3D printed mount for taking time lapses on the M3D as it is printing. So that little mount is this guy here. Now it's a very clever two-piece mount. It slides together, so the GoPro part slides onto the hook part, and the hook attaches onto the M3D. You just hook the back piece onto the printer's lip and then snap the front piece in, and then you can slide in the, uh, the mount, the actual GoPro mount itself. This is a unique design and is well thought out because of the way the 3D printer prints in layers. If you were to print these two sections together, the print doesn't come out that well. So being able to print the hook flat so the hook gets printed up and then be able to print the GoPro mount uh, with the base face flat so that there's no um, support needed in between the feet or the legs of the GoPro mount allow it to be printed vertically, which leads to a much better mount and a much more uh, stronger mount. If you wanted to make this even better, I think you could just glue the slider onto the mount itself, maybe get some little bit of hot glue. I might do that in the future because really once it's put together, you never need it to come apart. Now, I have learned some things while using this. The first was that adding two extender bars to remove the camera a little bit further away from the printer helped a lot. What I was finding was when I used this the first time, I actually didn't, I was at a range where the GoPro wasn't actually able to focus on the mount that was being printed. So by adding those two extender bars, I was able to move the camera back a little bit from the print that was going on, and this allowed the printer head to be in focus the whole time during the print. Then, while GoPros do shoot with a very wide angle, a fisheye lens, in editing, I actually removed this and it did make a little bit more pleasing shot. So again, having a little bit of extra uh, stuff in the shot isn't a very bad thing because when you do remove fisheye you are going to crop off a lot of the edges of the shot and overall it's um, it was a pretty cool little mount and I am really happy with it. Perhaps improvements in the future for this mount could be to extend the the lips that grab the GoPro mount when it slides in make that a little bit stronger because it is possible because of how small they are to pop out Tolerance seemed pretty good and I didn't have to sand or file anything in order to get it in. It did just slide right in, but maybe making that the lip on that a little bit bigger to, to really grab the, uh, the GoPro mount as it slides in to make sure that it isn't going to fall out or pop out if you put a little bit of strain on the camera. But adding the two extender bars made it a lot easier to focus. So I would say that if you have a little M3D and you want to shoot time lapses of your prints as they are happening, you should definitely check this out. And if you have a 3D printer, there are basically, for every 3D printer that exists, someone has made and drawn up a really nice 
uh, GoPro mount to mount onto that printer. So check out some of those 3D printer libraries, the warehouses, or th yeah, 3D design libraries and warehouses and find one because it's really easy to do. And once you just, you set your GoPro up to time-lapse mode, two second, five second delay between photos seems to work pretty well and plug it into external power and let it run while the print is printing and you get a nice little time-lapse of your print. That's it for the first episode of 3D Printed Thursday. If, Like I say, if you guys see 3D designs out there that you'd like to see printed and tested, leave them down in the comments. You can send them to me, tweet them at me, Facebook message me. You'll find me. There's links down in the video description to do that. And most of all, guys, until next time, thank you very, very much for watching. If you want to leave a comment down below, let me know what you think about these series. You can do that. Stay tuned for next Thursday when we explore the zip time out. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching.